that uh, Chinese characters all came from pictographs. But when I tried to memorize used to, uh, based on pictographs, I found that the information on the origin of pictographs was seriously lacking and very often wrong. So that set me on a 30 year uh, quest to find the pictographic origins of all Chinese characters. Chinese, of course, they grew up, they speak Chinese when they're five years old or four, and they start memorizing Chinese characters and almost all Chinese blindly memorize uh, several thousand characters. Uh, by the time they're high school graduates, they've been exposed to five or 6,000 characters. The minimum adult literacy is about 3,500 characters. And for HSK 6, level 6, that means you're a really good foreigner, there's about 2,500 characters. So that answers one of the questions that uh, some of the students ask. Uh, well, so uh, when I came to China uh, 10 years ago, I realized that 90% uh, of Chinese had blindly memorized all of their Chinese characters. And so I would ask them this question, what is this? It's a pictograph. If you don't know anything about Chinese, uh, you might not be able to guess what this is. But if I tell you it's a right hand like this, uh, most people should be able to see it immediately. And I told some of my physics students, I teach physics at uh, Beijing Normal University. I said, uh, what is this? And they didn't know. And they asked me, well, why does it only have three fingers? Okay. Uh, so why does it only have three fingers? I said, well, ancient China, everybody knows the ancient Chinese only had three fingers. And so half of my students believed me even though they were physics students. And so I tell my students, never totally believe what your teacher tells you. Always think about it and ask if it's really true. So this is a pictograph of a right hand. So what is it in modern Chinese? Well, it's this, this character here, you'll see now, some people see this and they see two characters. They think one is the modern character, one is the ancient character. They don't immediately see that these two characters are the same character. And it evolved over time, sort of like this, and it got more, more square. So every part of every modern Chinese character comes from a pictograph. This. The right hand is pronounced yo, but this character means and. Um, and it means and because it was borrowed for uh, its pronunciation. You can't easily draw a picture of and. Uh, so they use this for its pronunciation. So if you see this component here, okay, you can go. <laughs> Uh, so if you see this component here in any character, any place, it's usually a hand. Uh, not always, but usually a hand. I'll give you another simple character. Here we have two right hands. I hope you can see that okay. Now what does two right hands mean? Well, it means friend, because friends are people that have hands. And so if you draw two right hands, uh, the ancient Chinese would say, think, okay, this means friend. But this is not how we write the modern character. This, the bottom part gets changed to this in the usual way. The top part gets kind of elongated like this. And eventually comes to look like this. So this character here 
it means friend. And on the bottom, you have your yo, which means the right hand. On the top, you have this component here. And if you see this component in almost any character, it usually comes from a, a hand, usually a right hand, but it also can be a left hand. So when I learn Chinese characters, I always want to know the logic of the Chinese characters. So this is the logic to basic meaningful components that have logic. Now, sometimes in ancient Chinese, you would have this. Well, first of all, let me ask you the question. How do you draw a picture of meat? You can think about this problem. You can draw a hot dog, or you can draw uh, some uh, you can draw a steak, or you can you can draw a bone or something. But the ancient Chinese had ribs, and if you do a picture like this, every Chinese would know. Okay, those are ribs. That means meat, and it has something to do with the human body. It got simplified, and it frequently looks like this. And sometimes there's something in it. But this is very close to the word, the character for moon. So this is actually the character for moon. By the time, uh, well, I should mention that we have about 3,500 years of historical evidence of Chinese characters. The most ancient characters that exist, still exist, are oracle bones. They're about 3,500 years ago to 3,000 years ago. Then we have something called bronze characters that are about 3,000 to 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, we used uh, seal characters. And this is how we drew a picture of meat. And this is how we drew a picture of the moon. So you can see they're almost the same. So in modern characters, you uh, have a lot of confusion. Remember this character for meat. Uh, I'll show you one other character before I go on. You can ask yourself, how do you draw a picture of dirt? How do you draw a picture of dirt? If you just, you can't draw a picture of a pile of dirt. Nobody will know what it is because a pile of dirt doesn't have any form. This is the modern character for dirt or earth. Where does it come from? Uh, for a long time, we didn't know. If we go back 3,000 years, it looked like this. And we ask, well, what is this? If we go back 3,500 years, we have a lot of oracle bond characters. <clears throat> and most of the time it looked like this. But what is this? Some oracle bond characters we see some dots. And so what is this? If you want to draw a picture of dirt or earth, you can draw a picture of a potter's wheel with some clay on it. And so an ancient Chinese would have seen this and on the bottom, he would have think, thought a potter's wheel. And you see dots. Whenever you see dots in ancient Chinese, it usually means water. So a potter's wheel with wet clay on it, that's what this is. If we knew the original character, it would probably look something like this, and we could easily tell that it was a, a potter's wheel with some clay on top. So that's where we get um, the character for Earth. Now we have another kind of character. We have a modern character.
This character is pronounced du. It means stomach. And on the left hand side, you see a character that looks like moon. And on the right hand side, you see a character that looks like tu. Tu and du are pronounced very similar. So the thing on the right hand side is called a phonetic. And the thing on the left hand side, well, what does moon have to do with stomach? It doesn't have anything to do with stomach. But remember, the ancient character for meat and moon looked very similar. So this actually should be, logically speaking, it should be a row. This is the modern character for meat. <coughs> if we had a meat on the side and a two, which tells us the pronunciation, then we could probably guess it would be easy to remember that it means stomach. So for the past 30 years, I've been examining all of the usual Chinese characters, trying to find their original logic. And uh, if you try to find a book on this, you'll usually have a problem. We can trace characters back to uh, the origin, the oldest existing dictionary is called the Shou Wen Jie Zi. And there was a guy named Shu Shen who tried to explain the seal characters, which were the ones that you were used during the Han Dynasty about 2000 years ago. Unfortunately, he did not have access to the original characters, so he made a lot of guesses. He was a very intelligent guy but many of his guesses were wrong. The Shou Wen Jie Zi, the oldest dictionary, is very important because it tells us how they wrote the characters back 2,000 years ago. But as we examine archaeology, uh, older and older characters, we want to try to figure out what their real origins were. Like this character for dirt, I had to think about that for a long time before I figured out what it was. Now, in the past hundred years, we've had a lot of people trying to figure out what the original Chinese was. And so we have a lot of experts with a lot of opinions. <clears throat> Most of the experts will agree on maybe 90% of the characters, but there will be a lot of characters where different experts will have different opinions. Anyway, no matter what any expert tells you, you want to think about, uh, is this logical? Uh, is there a better explanation? Uh, so <clears throat> I'm always thinking about what would it be like to live in ancient China? What was their daily life like? And what could it be when we're, you know, when we're looking at some ancient character of what might be the real definition of where it comes. Now, these are some simple characters. <clears throat> I guess I have another simple character. In modern Chinese, you'll see this character. Of course, if you look at the modern Chinese, you don't have a clue what it is. Well, there is a character, Wai Hong, Nei Hong. Uh, these are two Chinese words. Wai Hong means an outsider. Nei Hong means an insider. This character is sometimes pronounced Hong and sometimes pronounced Xin. There's another Chinese word, Wu Xing, which means the four elements. If we look at the seal character for this, it looks like this. But we still don't know what it is. If we look at the oracle bone character, it looks like this.
So what's this? Well, this is uh, easier to guess. This is an, a street intersection, the intersection of two streets. So what this character means frequently is it means to walk. Uh, but when, it, when you talk about insider or outsider, how does that relate to street? Well, in ancient, I'm always thinking about ancient China. In ancient China and in most ancient civilizations, you would have small towns. And the people who would sell metal objects would be on one street. You would go down one street and everything on that street would be objects made of metal. On another street, you would have the pottery street. So you would go down that street and everything for sale there was made of pottery. You would go down another street and it would be things made of wood, uh, lumber and carving things uh, made of wood. So if you were, if you grew up on the wood street, the street that sold wooden products, wood products, you were an insider. Nei hong means you're, you belong to that street. Hong means a street. And Wai Hong means if you didn't belong to that street, you didn't know about those things. Maybe you were from the street that sold uh, liquids like alcohol. So you wouldn't know about uh, ceramics, for instance. So that's where they get the word uh, Nei Hong, which means insider, and Wai Hong, <clears throat> which means outsider. And the word wuxing, the five elements, those are basically five streets, the streets that sold different types of objects. So that's the history of this character. And um, I'm always thinking about the history of a character and how it was to live in the ancient world. <clears throat> so these are a few, uh, let's see, there's another simple character, uh, but not so simple. How do you draw a picture of a rock? And it's very important to be able to talk about rocks, but how do you draw a picture of a rock? You can't draw a picture of a rock. You have to draw a picture of something that represents a rock. This is a modern character for a rock. Pronounced shirt. And if we look, we can look at the seal character, and it looks like this. Sometimes it uh, looks like this, and sometimes it looks like this. So in the show one, it says, well, this is a rock rolling down a cliff. But I thought to myself, no, this is not what it is. Because again, if you just draw a picture like this, nobody will know that it's a rock. You have to draw a picture of something that represents a rock, something made of rock, something that represents a rock. <clears throat> if we uh, look at the Oracle Bone character, we see something like this. On the bottom here, we see something that it is a mouth, clearly a mouth, not a rock. And here we have something that is a triangle. <clears throat> so what could this possibly be? Well, 3,500 years ago, Chinese had petrophones. They're like xylophones. A xylophone is made of wood. A petrophone is made of stone. So they had triangular shaped stones that went from very small to very large. And if you hit these stones with a hammer, they would make different tones. It was a musical instrument in ancient China. If you were an ancient Chinese and you looked at this triangle and a mouth, you would realize, oh, this is a petrophone, a chime. It's a chime, you hit it and it makes a sound. And the, the mouth part means it makes a sound because uh, the mouth makes a sound. 
So you can see how this uh, got <coughs> uh, changed step by step into the modern character. So if you see this component, it makes no sense. But if you know where it came from, in this case, it comes from a chime. So each part, every part of every character comes from a pictograph and has a meaning if you can trace it back. So the, the co at the bottom, that means mouth. You have a mouth and a chime, same as you did in the, in the ancient character, but now you know the logic. And so I think that this is different from simple blind memorization that most people do. <clears throat> now we can take a really complicated character. And if we uh, study the character, we can learn all the parts. This character, Uh, this looks pretty complicated, and it is more, it's uh, one of the more complicated characters, not really complicated, but this is the traditional character for art. Now, you probably all know that about 70 years ago, 65 years ago, they decided uh, that uh, in mainland China, they decided that the characters were too complicated, the traditional characters were too complicated, and so they had to simplify them. In trying to understand simplified characters, the first major step is trying to figure out what were they thinking when they simplified it. Uh, and then the second major step is going from the modern traditional character back to the seal character, then to the bronze character, then to the oracle character. But this is a traditional character and this is how you would write the character for art, uh, if you were writing it about 70 years ago, or if you were writing it in Taiwan today. So let us, uh, we also need to know that characters and words, they change their meaning uh, over hundreds and thousands of years. The character for computer is Dian Nao, which means electric brain. The character Dian originally comes from lightning. Of course, it's that's electricity. And then it changes meaning to like Dian Liao, which means electric current. So we have uh, the character, its original meaning was lightning, but now its meaning is computer. And we have to think about how the character might have changed its meaning over the years. This character now means art, but it originally meant to plant uh, the crops. And you can see how the and it you can see how that planting the crops became an art form. And we often say, "Oh, do you have a green thumb?" That means you're very good at making a garden. But originally, this meant to plant crops. So now let's think about the pieces. We have this piece down here. And this is a cloud. And if we look at the ancient character for cloud, it actually kind of looks like a cloud floating in the sky, uh, a swirl floating in the sky. So you can ask yourself, what does a cloud have to do with planting crops? Well, planting crops depends on the weather and clouds indicate weather. So we can erase this. This is pronounced yun, which means clouds. So we can erase this and we end up with another character and we ask, what does this character mean? It also is pronounced e. It's an older version for art. It's an older version, also meaning to plant crops. 
One thing that we often see on the top of a character is something that looks like two crosses. It actually comes from this character here, the ancient character. It is two sprouts of grass. And it looks like two sprouts of grass. You can see how it kind of got changed to two crosses and then it got run together. But this is means grass. And if you see this on the top of any character, it almost always has something to do, almost always has something to do with plants. So what does plants have to do with planting crops? Well, that should be pretty obvious. So now we've explained this part. This is pronounced tall. And if we have one of these, it's pronounced t. And sometimes you will see this as part of a character. It also means that it's a plant of some kind. So now we're left with this character. What is this character? Uh, this character is also pronounced e, and it also means art, and it also originally meant to plant crops. Well, we see a two on the bottom. That means dirt. So planting crops does have something to do with dirt. But we have this on the top. So what is this character? Well, this is a mistake. It's, I call it a remnant. Uh, it has its own meaning, but I won't explain that uh, now. In many characters, we have, we cannot just look at the modern character and, and distinguish the parts because sometimes we have remnants. Like I just explained the character for stomachs and on the side we have a moon character. It's not really a moon, it's a meat character. So that's what I call a remnant. It's basically a mistake. <clears throat> So I'll draw this character how, how it should have looked if they didn't make this mistake. And we would now we see a character that looks like this. And another simple character is this Mu. If we see this, it means it a tree. It comes from something that looks like. You have branches on top and roots on the bottom. So if you see this moo uh, anywhere, it usually has something to do with either wood or a tree or some other kind of plant. So now we have components that we have a tree or a plant and it's in the dirt. And what does this come from? So now we can go to the seal character. We have a seal character that looks like this. It looks more like a tree. And we have uh, we have a character that looks like this actually before the seal character. This thing comes from a kneeling person with two hands. And so the original character is a kneeling person who is taking a tree or some other plant and putting it in the dirt. And so if you were in ancient China, you could see this and you would immediately have a pretty good idea what it means. It means to plant crops. So I'll... Uh, Give you one more character. No, two, I'll give you two more characters. <clears throat> this is a simplified character. It means 
its most common modern meaning is newspaper. And we have on the side, we have something. If you see this on the side, it almost always comes from a hand. Uh, not always, but almost always, it comes from a hand. So what does a hand have to do with a newspaper? Well, you might think maybe you open the newspaper with your hand, but that's not where it comes from. The traditional character for newspaper is is this. And in older times, uh, when people write, and even in modern times, when people write Chinese, they write it very quickly. And the strokes, they flow together. This is called xing shu, or cursive Chinese. I, I always translate it as cursive Chinese. It means where you write quickly and the strokes flow together. There's another kind of Chinese called cao shu, which I translate as super cursive Chinese. The strokes flow together radically according to certain rules, and then you can uh, write, the, write the characters very quickly. If you look at a letter that was handwritten by a Chinese, it will usually be in Xinxu or cursive Chinese. If you study it for a while, you can usually figure out the relationship between the cursive and the written on the, the printed form. What I write here, this is printed Chinese or Ying Shua Ti. Now, if you, according to the rules, if you write this very quickly, you write the first character, you first stroke here, and then everything goes together like this, and then the last stroke. So on this left-hand side, if you write it in uh, Sao Shu, it will end up looking like this. So when they simplified the characters, they decided, okay, let's change this to this, and it looks like this. Most people won't know that. One of the pro another problem is they simplified the characters about 60 years ago, but it's almost impossible to find the rules. What were they thinking when they simplified the characters? In some cases, it's pretty clear what they were thinking because the simplification was fairly simple and easy. But in other cases, the logic has been almost lost. So this is a traditional character. If we go back another um, thousand years, we get a character that looks like this. There's a man on top and something on the bottom. We still don't know what it is, but there's a man on the top. If we go back 2,000 years, the character looks like this. Or we can, uh... okay, we have a hand here on the side. In fact, remember I told you that this if you see this, it's almost always a hand. Now we're gonna see what a hand, this hand has to do with, uh, with newspaper. Well, this is a steel character from 2000 years ago. If we go back to the Oracle bone character, uh, we see something that looks like this. So now we have a kneeling man and his hands are out and these are handcuffs. And there's a hand above the kneeling man 
that indicates that there is some kind of control over the kneeling man. So in the original form, this man was uh, probably a criminal and he was handcuffed and there was somebody with a hand controlling his destiny. So what does this have to do with newspaper? Well, the original meaning of this character was not newspaper. The original meaning was a court document that sentenced the person to either prison or death or liberated the prisoner if he was innocent. So we have a saying in, in Chinese, yo e bao, san yo san bao. If you, bao means like, um, uh, your result, your, um, re uh, if you do good things, you'll get a good result. If you do bad things, you'll get a bad result. Uh, it's sort of like karma. If you do bad things, you'll get a bad result. If you do good things, you'll get a, a good result. So it originally meant a court document that sentenced the person, either liberated the person if he was innocent or uh, sentenced him to something bad if he was if he was guilty. Then it became any kind of government document, and then it finally became a newspaper. So, and we have a modern uh, word "baocho," which can mean either your salary that you get for doing good work, or it can also mean revenge that somebody takes if you do something bad. So this is how Chinese characters evolve. Uh, they evolve from, uh, you, you want to look at them and think, how did their pronunciation change? How did their meaning change? And how did their writing change? So I guess uh, I'll open it up to, does anybody have any questions? I can, hello? Rich? Uh, yeah, we have a few questions. Okay. Uh, one of them is, I didn't get the relationship between art and planting crops. Maybe you, could you explain it a oh, little bit more? Okay. Um, it could, sometimes characters are borrowed because of their pronunciation. Sometimes there's no connection. Like the relationship between and, A-N-D, and your right hand. The only connection there is they were pronounced the same. As for crops, uh, planting crops and art, uh, sometimes you can imagine there might there might have been a connection because uh, people who, if you plant crops nicely, it will be it will look like artistic, like a garden. But it's hard to tell for sure what people were thinking when they. Uh, the meaning changed to art. Also, you know, what is art? Uh, it changes over the years. In, in ancient times, it might have been a beautiful garden. Uh, then it becomes a beautiful painting. Then it becomes a beautiful sculpture. Then it becomes something abstract. So uh, we can't be totally sure how it got from planting crops to art. Uh, it might have just been borrowed for the sound, but it probably had some evolution of meaning. Question, how long does it take to be fluent in Chinese for absolute beginner? Uh, it depends on a whole lot of factors. Uh, fluent in speaking, uh, and it depends on how hard you study and how smart you are, how young you are. It's hard to say, but I would say within a year, if you're diligent, you should be able to uh, get along most of the time after a year. But with only a year, you won't be able, it will be difficult or impossible to have complicated conversations about uh, difficult things. I have a saying, you can get along 90% of the time on 10% of the language. So don't worry, after a year, you should be able to get along 90% of the time. But uh, if you know 2,500 characters 
you can probably get it along 99% of the time. But you'll probably never become like an educated uh, person because think about it. Almost everything you know about the universe, you, le you learned in the 12 years between kindergarten and high school. You learned about physics, biology, mathematics, chemistry, history, and everything you know. Mm -hmm. So when you learn a foreign language, the first thing you want to conquer is everyday stuff, like how much does it cost? Where's the uh, toilet? Uh, don't drive so fast. Uh, and it, you want to deal with everyday things. But to talk about, say, chemistry, it may be a long time before you learn, you know, plutonium and uranium, unless you're a chemist. So don't be too worried. Just remember you can get along 90% of the time on 10% of the language. The rest of it will take the rest of your life. Uh, writing and reading is a different thing. That's most people learn to speak fairly fluently first, and maybe a year or two, and then they learn to read and write. And again, it depends on how much time you can take and how good your memory is and how old you are and a few other things. But if you come here, you should be able, after a year, you should probably be able to speak and get along most of the time with difficulty. There's a question about what is the importance of the order of writing Chinese characters? It's, if you write what, what I call printed characters, I can write this in any order, it doesn't make any difference. But if I'm writing a letter, most people do not write printed characters. They want to write quickly and the strokes run together. And if they run together in the wrong order, people won't be able to recognize it. This character, one, two, three, it doesn't matter how I write the strokes, but if I write them quickly and I go like this, everybody can understand this. But if I, I write them in the wrong order quickly, uh, people might people won't be able to understand it. So you want to learn to if you want to learn to write quickly, you need to write them in basically the the right order. And also, if you want the computer to recognize your handwriting real time, it's better if you you should now computers can recognize pretty much what you write, but if you want to be sure, you have to write it in the right order. And there's a prescribed order, but not everybody writes in exactly that order. So it's important if you want to be people to understand when you write quickly. That's great. And many, like a lot of international students really want to learn Chinese really fast or as fast as possible. Do you have any tips about how you can learn Chinese faster or memorize Chinese characters? Well, it, okay, the, you just asked me about, is it important the stroke order? Different people, their brains work differently, really differently. If you analyze how people think in a language or about characters, you'll find that their brains, different people, their brains work differently. Now, some people can memorize, it helps them to memorize if they know the types of strokes and the order the strokes are written in. They can say, uh, and for some people that helps them to memorize things. For me, and if, usually if you're an older person, uh, I need to know the logic uh, because Otherwise, you're just memorizing blindly and, you know, like this character here, nobody knows what it means. You're just a whole bunch of strokes and it's a complicated character. And if you don't know the logic, then it's just really hard to memorize the strokes. But different people's minds work differently. 
And it also depends on if you already know how to talk, if you already know how to speak, uh, it's much easier to figure out that this character is the same as this character and you use it in this combination. I said that you need to, in order to be literate, you need to know at least two, uh, 2,500 characters or 3,500 characters, but you also need to know character combinations and you need to know thousands of character combinations. I think you can get along with 10,000, but a, high, a person with a high school education probably knows 60,000 combinations. But don't worry too much. Uh, if you know, if you can speak 3,000 words, like I say, you can get along 90% of the time. Cool. So maybe you, not eloquently, but. <laughs> So do you, you learn by researching the history? Do you, do you use uh, flashcards or, or exercises? Or have you, learned, oh, yes. have you used them? Uh, flashcards is another way when I was learning, uh, before I got into uh, Chinese etymology, I made myself up several thousand flashcards, actually 15,000 flashcards with Chinese on one side and uh, English on the other side. And some people do pretty good with that because you can, you can take 300 flashcards that you've made yourself. And as you know them, as you learn them, you can like put them aside and always, like I would be always out. Uh, I would have usually 300 flashcards with me, the ones I needed to learn. And whether you're sitting on the toilet or sitting on the bus or walking down the street, you can be looking at your cards. So yes. Uh, flashcards are a good way, and making your own flashcards is better than buying them, probably. Great, and there's a question from uh, Maham. How, how do you pronounce a new character just by looking at it? Well, 75%, uh, some of the characters like, uh, This character here for stomach. This is called a Xing Sheng Zi. 75% of characters are one part is the meaning part and the other part is the pronunciation part. The problem is that uh, the pronunciation has been evolving usually over hundreds or several thousand years. So this character is pronounced Du, but the Phonetic is pronounced too. That's fairly easy. But some characters like this, this character is, this is pronounced er, and the whole character is pronounced ni. But if you know many characters, you know that in Japanese, an er becomes a ni. So this may be helpful, but there are also many, many changes that have taken place. And also sometimes the phonetic on the right-hand side are characters that are not, not, are not common characters. But the 75% of Chinese characters are xi sheng zi. And so the right-hand side has something to do with the pronunciation. You can guess, maybe. Next. There's a question from Nabin. Uh, you said that Xing to, to walk originated with the relation yes. to streets uh, yes. and its meaning. What was the relation? Okay, you have a... This is a street intersection. That's pretty clear. But uh, you have to think about the ancient world. In, in the, mo the modern character, we will write like this. And there are many, many characters which have this on the side. And that comes from half of the Xing character. 
So if you see this on the side, it has something to do with walking or motion uh, or a street. Now this character, how did, how did it uh, evolve? Well, there's something that many people don't understand about small towns, small ancient towns. It used to be in Hong Kong, there was this one street that especially sold jade. Every store on the street sold jade. And there would be another street that every store, every store on the street would sell some kind of electrical appliance computers. There is the computer street. And every store on the street sold computers. And this is the way cities have been laid out for thousands of years. So if you came from the computer street, uh, you were an expert in computers. So they would call you a computer Nahum. That means you are from the inside, you are from the computer street. But if you weren't from that street, they would call you a Wai Hong, which means outside of the street. So it sounds a bit strange in modern English, but it wouldn't sound strange to almost everybody over the past several thousand years if you realized that the streets have always been laid out like this, that there's always been a computer street or a jade street or a ceramic street or whatever. Sometimes it's not clear how and the, what the connection is, unless you know how the ancient people lived. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that's amazing. It's amazing how much, uh, how interesting it is to learn about the characters like this. Yeah, good. Any other questions? Yeah, so I'm, I'm always thinking about the ancient world, like these connections, uh, the connection between a rock and a chime, the connection between uh, dirt and pottery, which have been lost in the modern world, but they retain their, you know, because of the Chinese characters, if you know their origins, you know, a lot of things about the ancient world. You know, we didn't have electricity until a couple of hundred years ago. Uh, there's a question from Aaron, which is, what do you think about memorizing the radicals? Is that a good way to learn Chinese? When people say radicals, they usually mean the 214 radicals that were invented in order to look up Chinese characters in the Kangxi Dictionary. You can memorize those radicals, there's only 214 of them. Uh, they, may, they may be useful to you. They'll be useful, say, if you're looking up Chinese characters in an older dictionary. I've analyzed the top 15,000 characters and I've isolated 990 modern meaningful components. Those are the real radicals, but I don't call them radicals because I call them components. Because in English, I call them components. Uh, because when most people say radicals, the immediate thing is that they, they think of those components that are that help you look up a character in a dictionary. But like this is one component. This is one component. This is one component. This is an I. It's a component. And if you know all of the components, uh, you know, about a thousand of them, you can explain any character, any of the tens of thousands of characters. There's a question what, from, you know, sorry. Whatever helps you memorize, that's good for you. There's a question yes. from Valerie. Why is it difficult for some Chinese to recognize Chinese characters? Why is it difficult for some Chinese to recognize Chinese characters? Yep. 
Okay. I have dyslexia. I got a degree in physics, but I couldn't spell. Most of us have some kind of learning disability. Either we can't play a musical instrument or we can't spell. I got into etymology and I traced the English words back to the Greek, uh, which uh, is spelled with a PH or German, which is spelled with a GH, or Latin, which is spelled with an F. And only that way could I learn to spell. I find many Chinese, many Americans, and other people have various types of learning disabilities. And some Chinese, they can't put the characters together in the right order. One of the things is, I believe, that they don't recognize the components. Like this character here, I, I know a Chinese kid with dyslexia. And This character here means courtyard. And uh, most Chinese, if you check their brain, they will not be able to tell you the logic. Uh, they won't know what this means. What does this have to do with courtyard? Uh, they don't know. Their brains have memorized the entire character. But somebody, they kind of vaguely remember what the character looks like, but they maybe, you know, put this on top. Well, the character is wrong, but it's kind of right. It's kind of close to right. This is a form of dyslexia, which many Chinese have. Uh, if they understand that this is one component and this is another component and you can't have it's like I can tell you that this character is wrong because it's impossible to have a character that formed like this uh, or virtually impossible. But I can tell you because I know what the components are. Many Chinese, they have memorized the entire character, but they don't understand what the components mean. So we all have different learning uh, strengths and weaknesses. Do you think that you've, it helps you in some way, dyslexia, to learn Chinese? Or is it, do you, do you have like a unique uh, yes. way of looking at it from that? Uh, there, are different, there are different forms of dyslexia. I wrote, a, when I was in my 20s, I wrote a letter to my parents and I, they said, you misspelled 15% of the words. Uh, so at, when I was 30, I started studying etymology. And after some time, I could spell most words, most English words correctly. But I had to do something to compensate for my dyslexia. And everyone has some form of learning disability. Like some people can learn Morse code. Some people can't. Some people can learn to play a piano. Some people can't or it's very difficult. So you have to find out what your learning disability is and try to figure out some way to compensate for it. Fred Astaire, he was a great dancer, a famous dancer, but he didn't learn to dance until he was an older person. He was uh, very ashamed when he went to a party when he was 15 and uh, couldn't dance. So I kind of overcompensated and became a famous dancer. You can. There's a quick question from Nabin, which is why is Chinese language so heavily, uh, why does it have so many tones, but other languages don't really have tones? Uh, that's hard to say. Languages develop certain properties. If you study linguistics, Chinese is called a separating language. Turkish is called an agglutinative language. They're, they're high-end opposites, agglutinative versus separating. 
Chinese is also called a syllabic language. Japanese is also a syllabic language. Arabic is a separating language, but it's also syllabic, uh, kind of. And so different languages have different, develop different properties. There are African languages that are tonal, uh, but Chinese and many Southeast Asian, Vietnamese, uh, many of them are tonal and it's hard to say why. It's just one of the properties that developed in these languages. It's very annoying for <laughs> English speakers. But another thing about tones is I get most of my, I get many of my tones wrong, but I can compensate for it by giving a whole sentence. If I say a whole sentence and I mispronounce a couple of tones, they'll still understand me. And if I have to get the tones right, like my or my, then I memorize the tones and make sure they're right. So usually you can get along with bad tones. Can you introduce your website and if any resources or any suggestions you have for students who want to learn more about? Uh, yes, about my China? website. My website is hanziyuan.net or chineseetymology.org. That's H A N means H A N Z I means Chinese characters. Yuan Y U A N means origin. Dot net. I'll write it down. Hansayen.net. And if you go to my website, unfortunately, well, it's, it's kind of, it looks kind of complicated. It has a lot of information, but my website does some things that no other website does. It dissects every character and it tells you the remnants and it tells you the original components. And it also, uh, I also attempt to explain what the, the logic of the original components. And you can put in any traditional character or simplified character and you can usually see the uh, characters as they evolved over the past 3,500 years. Not all characters are ancient characters. About 25% uh, of characters have been invented in the past few hundred years. Um, so not all characters have ancient forms, but all of their components have ancient forms. So you can you break a character into two or three pieces and each of those pieces is always going to have an ancient form. So you can go into my, um, uh, my website, you can put in any character, simplified traditional, and it will explain the origins back as far as they go. Great, thank you, Uncle Hansa, so much for sharing it's uh, amazing to have this this class and we want to thank you from all the students as well for your time to teach us uh, thanks a lot thanks a lot i hope uh, you got something in the, from the class and i hope uh, you eventually become all become fluent and literate in chinese great thank you is there anything else you'd like to say Other, otherwise we uh, finish off the class Oh, that's about, okay, we've been at it a little over an hour. I guess that's about all. That's a class. Great. Thank you so much, Uncle Hansa. I so, uh, appreciate the class. And thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, been good talking to you.